WWE has edited out a controversial segment for the WWE Network, plus an AEW star undergoing a character change, and Bobby Lashley reveals some very interesting stuff about WWE and his plans in WWE, which is actually kind of disappointing that he's no longer in WWE. It's all coming up right here on The Ango Show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Ango Show. Let's kick things off with Bobby Lashley. Okay, so this is actually really interesting because Bobby Lashley wanted to actually stay in WWE. Bobby Lashley appeared on the Lame Guys podcast, and he actually broke this down a little bit more in depth. He says, over at AEW, my my career and where it is now is really good for me. Could I or would I have hoped to stay with WWE? Absolutely. My plan was to have one more, maybe two years, and then retire with WWE. I was doing this stuff with the Street Profits. What I ultimately wanted at the end of that is when I go out, there are certain things I want to do. I wanted Dawkins and or Montez to turn on me, and I want to have a feud with one and then the other and eventually have both of them take me out at the end. Both of them are amazingly talented. I ultimately wanted to get beat. There are three or four people that I want to go out against. I wanted every one of them to have a good feud with me, and I want to put them all over. It was definitely Dawkins, Montez, Austin Theory. I want to turn him babyface, and I never had the opportunity to do something with LA Knight. He and I were good friends at Impact and coming over. We had several talks about him coming up and what he was going to do. That would have been a cool one. Outside of that, I had no ego with it. I wanted to go out in the right way. That just didn't happen. Wow. Okay, so a couple things I take away from this. I actually really love the idea with the Street Profits because the Street Profits have kind of been in limbo anyways. It would have actually been really cool for the Street Profits to take out Bobby Lashley at some point, Um, especially if WWE were to ever consider doing a singles run for Montez Ford. That could have been really cool for Dawkins to look impressive in a singles match. It would have looked really good for Montez Ford to look good in a singles match. That was just a really cool idea. Um, I also find it very interesting that he brought up Austin Theory. Austin Theory gets a lot of flack on social media, but I am a big fan of his work in the WWE. I do think he has potential to be a big baby face in WWE. I I would have actually liked to seen that. And then, of course, LA Knight versus Bobby Lashley would have been really cool as well. Man, you know, it's interesting because if I look at Bobby Lashley's comments, too, one thing that you got to consider here is that Bobby Lashley didn't want to leave WWE, and he wasn't thinking about going to AEW. Obviously, AEW became a choice because WWE did not re-sign him, but it is very interesting to know that he actually wants to stay there and retire there. I would have been really cool with any of those feuds, um, but it just goes to show you that Bobby Lashley understands as a veteran putting over talent and stuff like that. That would have been really cool for WWE to do that, and I'm shocked that they chose not to. All right, let's talk about Soraya. Uh, looks like she's got some plans of her own. Uh, she was on Twitter, and basically she was on the red carpet, and a fan posted this, and she basically responded to that tweet saying, wait until this version makes her way back to Dynamite, which is an interesting way to tease a gimmick change. Uh, Soraya coming in, you know, classy, dress. It's kind of different from how we see Soraya in AEW today. Um, so it is intriguing to me. I don't know what kind of character change we would see with Soraya. But what I will say is this. AEW, especially when you're analyzing the women's division, last night on Dynamite, it wasn't a big focal point. The women's division is not a big focal point right now. Um, and I do feel like sometimes the women get underutilized. And I think Soraya is another example of somebody who's kind of been underutilized. I know a lot of people don't seem to agree with that, but I think they have such a loaded women's roster. I just want to see a little bit more. I think sometimes the storylines that they have are good for the women. I think the matches are great. I just want to see more of it. I want to see more of a balance there. And, you know, for Soraya, it's been very interesting because she came into AEW and she hasn't really been a prominent figure in the company. And I have to wonder exactly what their plan is for her long time. But if they do do some sort of character change, I think it could be a really good thing. I think sometimes you got to freshen things up. And when you freshen things up, that gives you an opportunity to potentially get over with the audience. Now, another thing that I do want to mention here 
is that Soraya is only in AEW for one more year. Uh, we know that she is sticking with the company for one more year because we made a video on this a while ago. Um, but there was a lot of rumors that maybe she'd be leaving the company, and it turns out that she's not leaving the company. So it doesn't look like AEW has a really long-term like commitment to her. I would like to see a... <laughs> I would like to see AEW try and be committed to her. I'm not asking for anything crazy, guys. I, I genuinely mean this. I think she's talented. I think she's awesome. Um, and, and look, I understand like there might be some risks, obviously, with her in the ring and health and stuff like that. But if the doctors have cleared her and they're okay with it, put her on TV. Put her in a meaningful role in this women's division but altogether it's not just a soraya thing right like you got to do this across the board for the women's division on aew dynamite and collision um obviously going into 2025 rampage is not going to be a thing so between dynamite and collision i want to see more women's wrestling more women centric storylines and i want to see more women's matches on the show but the reason why i want to see it is because the roster is loaded and that is one thing that you just have to simply acknowledge it's a loaded roster Okay, guys, Carlito had a very controversial thing. You know, WWE is, they, they acknowledged it. So here's the thing. On Peacock, WWE finally uploaded that episode from October 21st for when Carlito made that statement um, about the about EO Sky and Kari Sane, uh, saying that he's got to learn Chinese. WWE has completely edited it out. Basically, the way that they have it edited on Peacock is now the camera zooms in on Adam Pierce's face. And when Carlito says the line, you can't see him and you can't hear him. So obviously, it's been edited out. Um, a lot of people are wondering what this means for Carlito. I mean, we still see him on TV, but he's not doing much or saying much on TV. Does he have heat? I don't really know. But what's really interesting here is that it was very clear the line wasn't scripted. Now, the reason why I'm even talking about this in video form is a lot of people thought WWE and Triple H actually scripted that line. This, to me, sounds on par with some of the reports that we saw previously where Carlito kind of did it on his own. WWE didn't script it. They weren't asking him to say it. This is something that he ad-libbed or freestyled on his own, and obviously that's why WWE removed it. Um yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, it makes sense for WWE to do that. I think WWE is trying to be very careful with controversies. I think WWE does have some attention on them as a company where just in general because of the Janelle Grant lawsuit and some of these other things, the Ring Boy lawsuit, you know, when, when these kinds of things are in the public eye, I don't think WWE wants any other controversies to be in the public eye as well, because at that point it's not wanted and it's not needed. Um, you know, is Carlito going to be in trouble? I don't know. I don't think he's in trouble, but is this a situation where WWE is going to be much more on top of things? Absolutely. And I think this also kind of hurts when, you know, WWE doesn't want to be as hands-on with these scripts. They try to give talent a little bit of freedom, but then when things like this happen, it kind of makes it really hard for that argument to be valid. So we'll see what happens, ladies and gentlemen, but that is the Ango Show.